Hello everybody, welcome back to Game Bro Station and uh, Game Bro Cast Podcast Talkcast DuCTALES! Yeah, you screwed that up already, Jim. I'm inside I'm so about proud of tales. You. Are you? Game Bro Station would like to apologize in advance for any headphone listeners that might be listening during this podcast. We are not responsible for your life. We're also not responsible for this, Jerry. Oh! 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 Matt, well, okay, thanks. we're good, we're good, we're good. Jared sounds strangely metallic. Yeah, I know. It's, Are you a metal a, man? It's in, no. He's a Metal Sonic fan. Maybe. Mm. But, no, it's an issue. Anyway, so, Mark, we watched another episode of DuckTales, because it's finally back on TV That's and right. the internet. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, DuckTales is back from hiatus. Yeah. How long, how long was that hiatus, uh, uh, actually? Well, a couple months. It was well, a yeah. good... Like three? Like, at least three. All right. Well, Standard. Yeah, it was it was a pretty <clears throat> bad hiatus, but we came out with DuckTales episode ten, the Spear of Celine. Dun dun dun. dun and dun. Um, ah. well, as you can see, Matt really liked the episode. <laughs> ah. uh, long story short, ladies and gentlemen, Scrooge and family wind up on a Greek island where they meet Zeus and Storkocles. <laughs> yes, that's right, Storkocles. Turns out Zeus is mad at Scrooge because Zeus can never beat Scrooge at anything because Scrooge is Scrooge. <laughs> also, um, in, during this episode, he, uh, Dewey and Webby go and search Celine's temple, only to find that there is no Spear of Celine, the MacGuffin we thought we were looking for this whole time in the connection to Della Duck. Yeah. And that was interesting. Well, actually, why don't we just open up the floor then right now? Jared, uh, thoughts on the episode? So... As normal, because I'm always really positive when it comes to DuckTales, I really like this. Mm, I had a lot of fun with this. Plus, Greek lore. Lore in general I love, but Greek lore, myths, and legends and everything, I love the most. There was a little, like, manticore, like, right in the beginning of the episode, and you just looked so confused for a second. (laughs) Well, that one threw me off, okay? I was just like, it's a cute little scorpion crab, and it has a friggin' lion head. (laughs) I was like, eh. But yeah, no. I thought the humor was good. I thought the two stories worked well. Sometimes when you split characters up into multiple paths, you gotta tell it right. Mm. Or else it just doesn't hit. Yeah, I thought the humor was good. Storkocles was a friggin' dork, and it was awesome. Uh, Donald was fun. You know, just good episode. I had fun with it, and I like what they're doing with the whole thing with Della Duck's story. Mm, all right. And uh, Matt, any thoughts you have on the episode? But We'll start positive, but if you just want to get right into the negative, yeah. let us let her yeah, I'll, I'll go right into the negative here. It's a fucking pain ass watch these episodes with Jared was laughing and being all emotional during Sherry. He doesn't even give me a second to process. He's like, aww. <laughs> aww. No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, I'll go straight to the positive. I think for me, I really like the... Uh, Olympic Games side quest that happened. Hmm. That was pretty fun to watch those cartoon antics do all that with Zeus being such a spoiled <laughs> little brat, not accepting the loss that he had many years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love how uh, Storkiles, uh, I guess that was his name. Yes. I didn't yeah. really catch that. Storkiles. Um, I thought he was uh, pretty fun. He was definitely a flawed character, but he definitely had that. Heart of gold within him. Like, yeah. he, he didn't seem malice to me at all. He just had fun being the hero adventurer type stuff. Mm-hmm. So, doing all that with Scrooge, uh, Donald, all that, that was all good and dandy. It was fun to watch that. Hmm. So, I'll say that was my positive for me. I had fun watching those guys duke it out. All right, all right. Um, friends, duck it out. <laughs> duck it out. That's a good pun. I mean, yes. we had an episode of Storkocles, for Pete's sake. Um, yeah, for me, I really... <clears throat> I thought the games part was the more entertaining part of the episode, for sure. Although, I think the Celine stuff with uh, Dewey and Webby was interesting enough just to keep the overarching story going. But um, I actually liked a lot of the Greek legend references of the Golden Fleece and all that kind of stuff. The and um, the girl. Siren, who uh, I guess... I guess Louie is going to get a record deal? I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was a fun episode. Some little fun trivia for you guys. Uh, for any of you Fantastic Four fans, you know, the ones that had the sequel. What yeah. do you even call those Fantastic Four movies now in these days? Because there's the first one that like never got released and it was just for the rights. Oh, it was the campy one. The one the, that had the, uh, Chris Evans in it. No, the, 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 the campy one's the one I'm talking about. Yeah, no, Chris yeah. Evans. No, there was the one before that. 
I was like, what? Oh, you're talking about the 90s one? Yeah. No, no one knows no, about that No, I one. don't. No, okay, no one knows about that. Okay, that was, no just, idea that, that, okay, that, that was just made, from what I heard, to hold on to the rights of Fantastic Four. That's what I said. They weren't even trying to make a decent movie. They were just no, like, oh, so shit, we want to hold on So for this. those of you who remember the Chris Evans Fantastic Four movies, that's right, kids. It's hard to believe. We're 10 years in this Marvel Cinematic Universe. There was a time when Chris Evans was in a bad Marvel movie. Mm. Yeah. Ooh, shots fired there. But uh, A fine human torch, but a bad... There seems to be a weird track record of human torches being in yeah, right, movie. and then they get into better ones. <laughs> yeah, but um, Killmonger. Zeus, voiced by Michael Chiklis, who some of you might remember as Thing from those uh, Fantastic Four movies when he was in the big orange bodysuit. Oh, here's oh, he yeah. a fun one. He played your hero's father and Spirited Away. Really? Now? Yep. I didn't know that. That this is the hard hitting information about Ducktales you people came for. Hey, hey. I believe you, he hey. was mainly known for the Shield, right? Wasn't that a Mike Chiklis thing that he would he, that he wasn't he like the hard ass in the shield? Jared, I, I need, believe he was. Jared, I need you to listen to me real yeah. carefully here. Yeah. Shut ah! up! Oh, ah! Okay, we're back. <laughs> God. So you were saying? So I was saying, Jared, I really think I am uncomfortable with the fact that you might be a, a machine person. I feel like I'm I need sorry to be you honest feel that with way, you, Mark. But um, yeah. So. We're back with DuckTales. This is yep. kind of exciting. There's going to be at least, I think, two to three more episodes before the season's over, which kind of makes the hiatus for being so long kind of weird. I feel compelled to say this. This episode came out at least close enough to the release of the new God of War game and has to deal with Greek <laughs> mythology. I know the new one is about Norse mythology, but it was just like, did they try? <laughs> I have to know behind the scenes. D- D- uh, Disney XD, please... Just shoot us a text. Just let us know. Your people can contact our people. Was there some sort of attempt of synergy here tonight? Or is this just coincidence over correlation? We'll find out. Unless we get a game called Mallard of War, I think we're fine. Oh, my God. Yes. But, um, okay, we'll open up to the floor then, though, before we wrap up. Any um, flaws, anything maybe you wanted, you didn't get anything you weren't too thrilled with this episode? Jared, would you like to lead off with any, any nitpicks? Um, I don't really have any nitpicks, but I think it's a good way to start to show up again after the hiatus. Like, you had Scrooge in there again, because, again, he's still David Tennant, and, you know, he could be possibly expensive. I don't know. We talked about that before. He was missing from some episodes, and we figured maybe he's expensive to have do voiceover. We don't know. I don't know. No. But He's under Disney's contract. I really don't think that would be much of an issue. For that's that. a very good point, Matt. Plus, Thank it's you. voice work. He hasn't actually had to physically go True. in. True. I mean, True. hell, if he's in the UK, he could just go to a sound studio <clears throat> there and do ph- it. Phone in the audio. So, yeah. Actors Very have true. done that before. I don't yeah. think it's much of a factor here. That's a good point. But yeah, so Scrooge, you know, sometimes he's not in the episodes, but this time he is. We got Launchpad. We got most of the main cast except for Mrs. Beakley. Mrs. Beakley was not in this yeah. one, yes. But besides that, everyone was there, including Donald, because uh, sometimes Donald yeah. is super missing from it. Donald has sometimes been pretty MI, and uh, just for the end of the episode, they crash land on the island because uh, Webby and Dewey yeah. tr- tried to sabotage the trip so they could get to the island in the first place. Yeah. In order to solve the problem at the end, we find out Launchpad has dismantled the entire plane. Yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> but uh, Matt, anything you'd like to say? Uh, any criticisms for the episode? Uh, so, uh, criticisms I had was mostly in the Dewey and the Go- What's Webby? Webby's storyline. Is that I kind of felt like the emotional take of the whole thing was a bit too abrupt for me. Because mm. I, I like the idea where it's like, okay, we want to find out more about Dewey's mother. Surprise, surprise, the other two ducks don't really seem to give a shit. Just him. Cool. Anyway. They might have accepted the fact that, and they really hint at it this one. They kind of hint a little more, I think, specifically that, like, she's just dead. Yeah. Like, at least the way Donald plays it. Oh, yeah. No, I'm sure sure she's not here anymore, but Dewey seems to be the only one who kind of wants to know what's up with that. Right. But But anyway, the point I'm trying to get at is the whole storyline made sense to me. He wants to find out more about her. But they reach a certain point where all of a sudden he gets this impression that she may have not actually been a good person. So he doesn't want to learn anything. Doesn't want to have his parental image tainted by any way. Mm -hmm. And so Webby kind of looked like she was going to give him the prep talk saying like, hey, you could find out. Maybe it's for the best that you don't. But she kind of said this not really in a single word. And then all of a sudden Dewey just kind of like flips around and is like, yeah, okay, Yeah, let's go find out because I want to know. 
And then he goes inside the temple, finds out there was actually no spear, and it was just a, a false to get, um, uh, what, Della? Della, his mother. Yeah, Della, his mother. Della to meet some random ass stork goose lady. And they have a quick dialogue exchange, which really did not make any sense to me in terms of like emotional relation connection. Because hmm. he was kind of at, she, the goddess, whatever, Selena, whatever, was trying to like mend what kind of relationships Della had. And I don't know, they just got a little too touchy for my taste. I was like, you guys literally just met. <laughs> and you're kind of, I don't know, I just felt way too... Quick. Yeah, it felt too quick. Like, they were trying to get from point A to point B as swiftly as possible within the storyline. Personally, I would prefer it if they just had an entire episode focusing on that storyline and actually yeah. show the emotional growth that Dewey has to come into terms with whether or not he should learn about the true face of his parents and what that could have meant to him. Yeah. So that's where that's where that bothered me, especially I'm, when story credit went to like four or five people. I'm like, okay, uh, that might have been a bit of a mess. I do agree. I think I would have, I think I would have liked it a lot. Maybe if there was just if these were honestly maybe even split into two separate episodes. There's one episode where it's just you know mm. lighthearted kind of Greek you know games kind of things like that. Yeah, then there's fun another stuff episode that is much more a bit of emotional payoff. They, there were moments where it did, they didn't quite seem to maybe blend well with what they wanted out of each different story. I, I would say, that. or at least not well enough for just this short, the short, you know, 30 minutes runtime you're going to get with a TV show. Yeah. Yeah. The whole 22 minute got fit that in there. <clears throat> yep. Well, it didn't work for me. I think that'll just about wrap us up here. Oh, yeah. But as we said, DuckTales is back from hiatus. And join us next week where we review episode 11, Beware the Buddy System, with guest star Lin-Manuel Miranda as Gizmo Duck. A long-awaited reveal for a lot of diehard fans, to be sure. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of fitting, because wasn't episode two of the first season when we met... uh... Gyro? Yeah. Yeah, so we're getting that payoff now, finally. That's awesome. And for all you Hamilton and Moana fans out there, Lin-Manuel Miranda. Yep. Uh... Yes, Matt. (laughs) No, that's all right. I just wanted to support your claim and cheer and say, ah. Uh, well, I'm. Great musician. Great yeah. musician. Great musician. If we actually get a musical episode, I will be surprised. Oh, what if the whole Gizmo Duck episode is actually just one music? I would be, I would be positively I would surprised. Be, I would probably die laughing. But, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, that will do us for this week of Game Bros Cast Reviewing of DuckTales. Tune in next time. Jared, take us home. As we say here on this channel, to be continued, everybody. Take care and have fun. 